So I, I played that song at the beginning of my stream, right? And it was really bad. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say bad. Unique. It's unique. And the author of this is someone who calls themselves Patric Patricia Taxon. They are a bread tuber um, and a furry and an autist. And they have published a 42 minute long video about furry sex. Now this is, this is, I have to be very, very delicate with this because Adam from YMS has habitually made the argument that animals can consent to sex. And I have discussed this with him and I have not been able to change his opinion on it. Um, regardless of how correct I am. And now uh, this guy has a different take about furry sex. And I want to make it clear. I think that this person is blisteringly autistic. I think that he has no tether to the real world. And that explains why he says shit like this, okay? That argument that furries tend to fall back on in response to bad faith allegations of zoophilia is the tried and tested Harkness test. Summarized in a handy infographic, it goes as follows. So you want to fuck a fictional creature, give it the Harkness test first. Does it have human intelligence or greater? Can it talk or otherwise communicate with language? Is it of sexual maturity for its species? If the answer to all three is yes, then you can fuck it. It's a non-human creature with sapience and all you need to have consensual sex <laughs> consensual Consens cons if you answered no to one or more, watch out. That's bestiality or possibly pedophilia. Don't fuck it. So, if you want to fuck a fictional creature, first ascertain if it's as smart as you, can give verbal consent, and is of age for whatever culture it came from. Surely then, it's ethically sound to fuck animal people, provided they are shown to talk and give consent like any human adult would. They're just shaped a little weird. I don't like this argument. I don't think it's persuasive to the people we're trying to persuade and isn't really persuasive in general. Uh, you probably know where I'm going with this, but I'll say it anyways. You guys know Scooby-Doo passes the Harkness test, right? It is, unquestionably, ethically sound to fuck Scooby-Doo, provided you get his consent and are a resident of Crystal Cove in real life. But these aren't the terms of the discussion. This is not a moral question any of us will ever have to consider, unfortunately. You could fuck Scooby-Doo if he was real, but he's not, and you are. Your wants and actions have ramifications in this world, you horny son of a- And obviously, if- This guy is- This guy- This guy- Okay. It's hard to explain. He is very autistic, that's obvious, right? But there's several kinds of autism. And he's somebody who's obviously, like, higher IQ, but he's so autistic that he has no concept of the world around him. He is, like, properly, completely detached from real life and exists in his own bubble where he can kind of see this distorted view of the world around him. And uh, it reminds me of someone I actually knew from Blockland, who was an autistic game developer, and he had sleep apnea. He was very, very depressed his entire life, cause he, and he found out he had sleep apnea. And then he started wearing a CPAP machine, and his sleep apnea, like, he stopped being depressed. And then he found out that his face, like, his face was very flat, and he literally couldn't breathe at night because his jaw was like disfigured. So he had to surgically alter his jaw so he couldn't stop choking to death in the middle of the night. No, but he was very autistic and he, he operated in like his own world of, uh, of, um, he wasn't Asian. He was white. He just had a very square head. Uh, but he operated like in his own world and he had like this very strange like like quasi logical where he saw things very logically and then like his interpretation of certain situations is like bizarre this guy is is more bizarre um but he reminds me of that so I, that probably is why i i don't hate him he's he's kind of funny and it's it's hard to say that like after that clip because he talks about fucking scooby-doo and then the remaining 40 minutes of it are him trying to explain furries and I've taken some clips because I, I find it I find it funny and we're gonna we're gonna listen to more of this I, I'm forcing you to listen to this 
judged. What are you doing in the universe when you post a piece of hypno age kink incest erotica on Twitter? Uh, well, you're not a actually fucking your little sister. I think we can both agree on that. But you're doing something, right? Listen, I get it. I partake in scenarios of unspeakable sexual abuse with my friends every day for fun. I'm literally neurodivergent and a grown-up. But because of this, I am intimately familiar with the ways in which the most fucked up shit possible can be made not only permissible, but wholesome and comforting with the Kuleshov effect or something. Now imagine if I used my powers for evil. The hypothetical hypno age... Okay, he is not, to be clear, he is not okay with this. He's using this as a negative example. However, I did want to play that because it's very fucking weird. He says this, or not, he doesn't say this. This random person on Twitter posts this thing about, it, this is like dangerous schizo babble. I don't know what the fuck this is, but this is like an obsessive fantasy that he has with fucking a little sister and being fucked by his little sister. And he's trying to use this as like some kind of weird autistic jumping point about how this is very bad but fucking a dog a, a fake dog this is fucking weird and gross but fucking a fake dog is not I, but i did want to just show this because this is really gross um it continues there's like five of these that i have queued up i'm not gonna listen to 40 minutes of this but it made me laugh pretty obvious but at the same time it also makes mouse a furrier work of art you might be thinking it should be the other way around like Surely, Zootopia. If you don't know, Maus is a German comic about the Holocaust, but it involves a, a mouse. It's like a, it, it uses animal characters because there's like a literal allegory that the Jews in it are, are mice. They're rodents to be exterminated. And that's the, the, that's the whole point. And he's making the argument that Maus is furrier than Zootopia. Let's listen. Zootopia cares so much more about the animalistic nature of its world. Isn't that what furries are all about? No, it is precisely Mouse's refusal to explain or justify its furry characters that makes it furry, because the imagery is self-justifying. Zootopia is stuck running- It's called Mouse. It's called Mouse. Why are the Jews rats? Are the Germans the, the mice and the Jews are the rats? Is that, is that why it's called Mouse? Oh, okay, circles, I understand. Trying to work backwards from the central premise of animal species as a metaphor. The Germans are prejudice. cats. Now I'm even more confused. Why is it called mouths when the Germans are, are are cats and the the Jews are rats? I'm I'm more confused than ever before. It's only so lavish because it has no confidence in the inherent aesthetic value of animal imagery. Mouse is married to its imagery. It's not working backwards from anything. It's working forwards from the central aesthetic motif of Jews as vermin. Zootopia used animal imagery as a cute and fluffy metaphor for racism and then built a huge heaping scaffold around it to justify itself. Mouse used animal imagery to evoke the empty eyes of a dead rat. The assumed symbolic desirability of animal imagery is one of the core facets of furry fandom media. The world building of our fiction and illustration is often non-existent in a way that will remind you a lot more of Mouse than it does of Zootopia. So, I, I just love, like, he's trying, he's trying to, in, in this argument, to clarify what he's saying, he's trying to demonstrate that Zootopia is a cartoon. And he says that Zootopia is less furry than other than other things, because you would assume Zootopia would be like a, a classical example of what a furry is. He's saying no, because it, it, it's a cartoon and it really has to emphasize that it is animals in this fictional world, that it, it is less furry than something like Mouse, where the characters are just animals. And there's no explanation for it, there's no apology for it. And the animals are, are animal characteristics are allegories of personality versus um, just being like a quirky thing for a cartoon. He's saying that Zootopia is a cartoon and Mouse is more identitarily furry. But what he doesn't understand because he's autistic is that you shouldn't compare a Holocaust show with a cartoon. He doesn't seem to understand how bizarre that is and how that would come across to people. Um, so that's why I played that. I found that very funny. Uh, there's four more. Movie is a film that was sent to me by Jack Saint. So blame him for the next several minutes. Oh, Pete Oh. 
Hey, Cody. Can I still down here? Can't you listen out on other things? I don't see a one nine. It's the best possible case for using the word autistic as an insult. The rod. Oh, I put it. Oh, okay, so to clarify, his argument is that furry is three things it's sensory, it's tactile, and it's autistic. So for something to be truly furry, it must revel in the touch of being furry and the senses of being furry, and also it must be autistic. And he's using this as an example of an extremely autistic piece of furry art. Um, but the reason why I play that is because he says this. Fellow's movie reportedly took like five years to make and also apparently had some issues behind the scenes, which I won't be getting into because then my primary resource would be a website that has my docs. The Rodfellow- You love us. You love us. Don't even try. I know you read all the little juicy furry go uh, drama and gossip that you want to, motherfucker. You partake. You're no better. You're no better. Furry man, men with cat ears, dog ears, whatever the fuck that is. They look like two little vaginas strapped to your head. Find better furry ears. Furry. Chouette is a novel written by my mom about the experience of raising me. I, I just felt that if, if my mom had written this book about me, it would destroy me. Hello. In this novel, not uncontroversially, she represented my autism by casting me as a wild animal, an owl-child hybrid. And just so we're clear, she didn't know about any of this business. My mom independently came up with the idea to represent me as an animal. Why'd she do this? In the flashbang that DreamWorks let off three inches from my face, Mr. Wolf is, for all intents and purposes, just a guy. He's a dude. He walks around like a fella. He's a hardened criminal, but... Um, that, okay, that's too much. I, I just wanted to play the part where his mom portrayed him as an animal in a novel that she wrote about him and raising him and didn't know that he was a furry and he found it um like cosmically uh incidental that his mom portrayed him animalistically in the book about raising an autistic child when he identifies as a dog uh and I'll, i will play a clip about that in a second but he found that of course i am a dog i am an animal I am literally an animal in the same way that transubstantiation is literally the blood and flesh of Christ. I am literally an animal, and of course my mother would recognize me as an animal and write about me without knowing that I'm a furry. Bam. Light bulb in the head. Great point. Uh, next one. A lot of well-meaning people ask me how I want to be treated if I'm a dog. I want to be treated like a dog, but a lot of you have never met a dog who's also kind of a person. I understand the confusion. For this reason, I am inserting this interlude into the video so I can let all of my human allies know how I would like to be interfaced with. Friends and non-friends alike. So. I identify as a dog. I don't care if you're the kind of person who doesn't really go along with roleplay. Calling me a human being is misgendering me. Put me in a fucking Blair White video, see if I care. But furthermore, I'm not your dog. I am a stranger's dog that you might see on the side of the street. Because I'm very cute, you might lean down and say hi, give me a little good boy for my troubles, but anything beyond that is crossing a boundary for my hypothetical owner in this situation. And as much as I would like for every stranger to just intuitively recognize that I'm the sort of creature that they're allowed to touch and pet whenever they want, um, the optics of saying that are not good. By all means, err on the side of dehumanizing. It's only a problem when it's combined with a sense of overfamiliarity. Like, any dog would react poorly to some human they don't know smothering them. But if I already know you, if we're friends, then I'm your dog. I'm your dog. On all levels except physical, I am your dog. There's a couple differences. I like conversation. I will talk to you about video games and music theory. But otherwise, I am your dog and I am to be treated as such. Greet me as if you can see my little tail wagging behind me as you open the door. You can pet me, no questions asked. My body does not hold the same sanctity as a human body. You can literally just... If it seems weird, it's because I'm a different species than you! I have been forced to maintain a human form for the benefit of those around me for my entire life. If we're gonna meet up, we need to determine to what degree I'm allowed to take the mask off. Determining if I can... So I I really this is why this is the this I want to make it clear this is why I appreciate his autism is that in any context saying I am a dog and I'm a woman I am equally a dog and also transgender 
my trans species identity and my transgender identity are equally valid and important to me. And I do not care what you think about that. That is awesome. I really appreciate that because that's the kind of, of opinion that would literally piss off like a, a tranny autogenophile who takes himself too seriously and is just like porn addicted but isn't autistic at all. That would set somebody like that off. Like, and this guy is just reveling in it. Like, yeah, I am a dog and I'm a dog woman and I'm equally dog and equally woman and fuck you. That's funny. I really like that. Um, he said he's a good boy, but you say any dog is a good boy. You don't say good girl to a random dog. You always say good boy. His name is Patricia. Okay, listen. He's th he's he he directly made that comparison. He is a dog and a dog woman, and he doesn't care if you take that if if you take offense to that. If you're gonna be Blair White and put him in his cr a cringe compilation, he does not care. That's great. I love that. Uh, and then one more thing. What was this video about again? Something about animals. Oh yeah, I should be allowed to fuck Shokichi. I should be allowed to commence a meet cute with him while we're both in our human forms, growing closer to each other over the course of weeks while still hiding our true animal nature, each of us unaware of the animal in our midst. I should be allowed to accidentally catch him with his guard down, so at ease around me that his mask slips and I catch a glimpse of his tail or his ears or something gay like that. I should be allowed to comfort him after he realizes his mistake, show him the patch of fur that I discreetly allowed to cultivate on the back of my wrist, the public setting preventing me from going further for the moment. I should be allowed to take him up to my room, tell him that he can be himself around me and transform into a Pomeranian as he transforms back into a Tanuki and we f absolutely p raccoon's ass. I was treated like a failed human my entire life and you're surprised that my response was to become a dog and fuck other dogs? Fuck you! The unceasing He's just so autistic. I love it so much. This guy does not give a fuck. I could say any, I could say, I, I, I had no choice but to laugh and appreciate his autism because if I were to sit here and condemn him in the strongest possible terms, it would run off him like water off a raincoat. He does not care. He exists in an existential plane of dog fucking that you, you can't, you can't criticize you can any kind of stone that you try to throw high enough to knock him off his dog fucking cloud will fall short and tumble back to the earth before he even notices it chat there's no point it's impossible <laughs> there's it's a it's a it's a pointless endeavor so why even bother chat um i i think and i also i think he's completely harmless to be honest with you i think that he is so detached from reality that he does not possibly have like adam definitely finds big cats like actual physical big cats sexually attractive this guy is so autistic that he probably doesn't find anything in the real world sexually arousing to him he unless it's like drawn in like the specific way that that he is aroused by it doesn't matter to him at all that's my take on him um it, it it's it's so the autism thing is like so weird because it's like when when you have someone who's like this doesn't give a fuck it makes you wonder what they are because it he is he's pure hedonism this is this is the the kind of gotcha with uh autistic people you would think that when you have someone who is stripped away from social cues and they are a logical person and in this case i think this guy is probably of like on a purely mathematical sense he's probably above average intelligence so you have someone who doesn't have the in the inhibitions of social social questions he's accountable to nobody in terms of his social cues and he is above the average intelligence and he's capable of criti critical thinking. And you would think that with a person like that, you would attribute them to like a mad scientist, somebody who is willing to do things that are unethical to find truth beyond like what is considered normal. Like, like a philosopher who's willing to like question God or something, someone like that. And like even though it's 2000 years ago and 
uh, you know, people take religion very seriously and they, they burn witches at the stake and heretics at the stake. He is willing to sit down and really think things through and publish his thoughts, even though it would, it puts him at risk of being killed. Like that's the kind of thought that you would expect from somebody who's uninhibited and logically thinking. However, when it comes to autist, like this guy, it doesn't, it doesn't manifest that way. And I, I realize why. It's because they're horny. They're the kind of retard that's horny. And he doesn't use his lack of social uh, situation, lack of like social restraint to achieve scholastic endeavors. He just is very horny and willing to per pursue hedonistic pleasures no matter what it is. And he just doesn't care what people think about it. And it's bizarre because, again, like I said, you would expect it to manifest productively. And he's like, no, I'm going to play around with music and I'm going to draw furry fangs in exactly the right way that I like them. And I'm going to fuck things and masturbate to weird porn that I like the most. And I don't care what anyone says about that. And it's like, it's, like, <laughs> it's just really bizarre. It's really bizarre to even sit down and think about. Uh, castration doesn't cure it. They have proven that if you chemically or physically castrate sex offenders, like not I'm not calling this guy a sex offender, I'm just saying that in studies where they have castrated child predators, they reoffend. So even castration, like there's a part of the brain that even when it's completely neutered, they have to be gratified in some way. Um, it's very bizarre. It's very bizarre. This guy can be on YouTube, but you can't. I'm telling you, Neil Mahan just wants me to put on the dog ears, man. I can talk about fucking dogs, but I can't talk about, um, about shrooms, basically. It's just how it is. What the fuck did you just walk into? We're, we're talking about a guy with a mustache who looks kind of like Weird Al. He looks like Weird Al if you fuck dogs. I'll put it like that. If Weird Al was a dog... It'd be this guy. Okay. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Dolphin. Remember to like and subscribe.